Hey creeps, it's that time of year when we get to decorate for the best holiday, Halloween. Now I know I'm a little late to the party when it comes to my theme choice this year, which is 80s slash 90s nostalgia, especially when you consider that the first season of Stranger Things was released back in 2016. The Fear Street series was released in 2021, and it's already been eight months since Lisa Frankenstein was released in theaters, but I guess better late than never? I do want to submit a disclaimer at the top saying that there is not going to be any 80s or 90s vintage decor featured in this video, rather it's going to be a modern interpretation of what was popular back then in a neon color palette. Welcome to the channel, the place to come for spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Let's go decorate for Halloween! To get started, I needed to retrieve the Halloween decor that I wanted to use from the hallway closet. This meant removing a fair amount of items to be able to excavate the main Halloween decor container. Zinnia made sure to survey my progress from her favorite napping spot. I want you hide me. I want you Let me know in the comments if at the end of the holiday you're like me and you are really good at packing up the majority of your decor in an organized strategic way, but when it comes to anything that gets overlooked, it often gets shoved in random nooks and crannies, in a closet, or a place that's just out of the way. A couple pieces I knew I wanted to have out this year were the doll head planter and the neon ghost light from Michaels last year, but I think both of these are available as part of this year's line, although a little different in appearance. Of course, you can't have an 80s slash 90s nostalgia theme without boo buckets, so I pulled these out as well. Target had a lot of excellent neon Halloween decor this year that I thought would work well with my decor spread, so I bought a few things with the intent of trying out a variety of options, then returning what I didn't need. Let's take a look at what areas we plan to decorate. First is the shelf right above the bookshelf in the living room. The second is the shelving in the kitchen. I also plan to do some decorating on a few of the window cells in front of the television and on the coffin shelf in the hallway. The first step was to clear the shelf in the living room and then clean it with a surface cleaner. There was a candle casualty while clearing the shelf unfortunately, so now I owe Aaron a candle. My plan was to hang the bat piece so that it was centered over the shelf, then place blow molds and other decor pieces in groupings on the ends of the shelf. This way the bat piece would still be visible and not covered up by the other decor. I initially tried to eye the center, but ultimately got out the tape measure to find the shelf's exact center. With the bat finally centered over the shelf, I could then start playing with my decor placement, beginning with a couple of my favorite blow mold finds from Target. I was pretty sure that the height of these blow molds would fit between the top of the shelf and the ceiling when looking at them in store. I was super pleased that I guessed right, and they all fit no problem. When decorating an area for the first time, or in a new way, it's a lot of shuffling decor around and then stepping back to look at your work over and over again until you find an arrangement you like. I included some of this footage, but definitely not all of it, for the sake of your sanity. <laughs> After 
settling on the three blow molds on the left side of the shelf, I decided to use two of the four tombstones in the set I purchased for the opposite side. I had to stop decorating that first day and pack everything up to make sure the apartment was at least somewhat functional for guests the next morning. After our guests left, I picked up where I left off, clearing the kitchen shelves and then cleaning all the surfaces with a surface cleaner. One decoration that I always incorporate, regardless of theme, is this bat neon light from Target. I love the purpley pink glow that it emits and the bat shape. I did some super light research to see if neon lighting was popular in the 80s and 90s and found that it did make a comeback during the 80s after being super trendy from the 1920s through the 1960s. I wanted to start with the boo buckets because I knew I wanted these to be one of the focal points of each shelf. Then I added these black metal houses on the opposite shelf ends from the boo buckets. I have a little DIY project that I'll feature in the next video that I'm pretty excited about that involves these black houses, so stay tuned for that. Then it was time to add in the filler pieces and accent lighting. After finishing up with the decorating on the kitchen shelving, I moved on to decorating the kitchen counter, the areas around the TV, the windowsill, and the coffin bookshelf. Vinny was being especially inquisitive with all the activity happening, being very insistent that she get pets. I purchased these vintage Halloween trick-or-treat blow mold pails at this place in Oregon City, Oregon called the Ghoul Gallery. If you have any Halloween collectible in mind, I would definitely recommend checking out this place either in person or through their website. Hey there, it's the next day. Let's go see what decorating I got done yesterday and see if there's anything that I can improve upon. Okay, we're gonna start with the shelf right above the bookcase. I love all the neon colors that I have throughout. I love that this bat wall decor piece like ties everything together with the colors that it has in it. I weeded through what I had purchased from Target and ultimately landed on this three ghost blue mold as well as this green pumpkin and the tombstones over here is the pieces that I wanted to keep. I think what I want to improve upon is having some smaller decor right in front of the tombstones over here on the right side, which I have some ideas for that will probably be featured in my decor DIYs video, which will be the next video that I put out, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, I feel like it's pretty solid overall. All right, this is the other main area that I got decorated yesterday. I love that I included these boo buckets that I got like two-ish years ago. It's a perfect addition for the theme that we're shooting for this year. The alternating black metal houses that I included on each shelf. Those are super versatile decor pieces that work really well for both Halloween and Christmas. I don't know about you all, but these corn husks were always a staple for decor when I was little, so I had to include a couple of those, both one here and one on the very top shelf there. One thing that I really want to do is I want to create wraps for these candles because the orange isn't quite right. 
I really want to do like a, a neon wrap to make it correlate better with the other shelf and also go along with the 80s, 90s nostalgia theme slash color palette. There's also some mini pumpkin leaf bags that I want to make for these houses that'll just sit here on the sides, which will be something that I feature in my decor DIY video, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, other than that, I feel like the arrangement of the pieces is super solid. I have my neon lighting up here as well as like the candles also providing other lighting for this shelf. I'll probably also try to do some little mini puck lights for inside these pumpkins to light them up and I also need to figure out something to go inside this switch bucket to light it up because currently it doesn't have anything on the inside. I think that for now we'll create candle wraps for those luminary candles, figure out lighting, and we'll wrap things up. To create my candle wraps, I first collected measurements for the candle's heights and circumference. The fabric that you see laying on the desktop was one that I inherited from my mom's stash that was actually used for a witch costume that I wore back when I was like six. This print has a lot of sentimental value for this reason and I thought it would be the perfect 80s, 90s print for the candle wraps. With the direct selection tool, I was able to adjust the individual points of the star to replicate the shape of the stars on the material. I would like to open the segment by saying that I do not condone the tracing of or copying of another designer's or artist's work. However, since I have no intention of selling or distributing these files I'm making for the candle wraps, they're solely for personal use and this print in particular has sentimental value for me, I think it's okay. But let me know what you think of this in the video comments. After tracing all my assets, I then scaled everything down to be a more appropriate size, and then began arranging my vectors in both an aesthetically pleasing way while also including as many bats and witches that made sense on such a small surface. My plan was to use the files with the bats, witches, and stars for the black paper cuts, then cut my neon paper using the rectangles without the interior cuts. To prepare my files for Cricut Design Space, I selected each of the black paper cuts individually and used the Outline Pathfinder tool, changed my stroke color to black, and then increased the stroke weight by a little to make my lines more visible. Once finished, I then went to Object, down to Compound Path, then Make. Export each cut as an SVG, then import into Cricut Design Space to then be guided through material selection and machine setup. Performing these steps for each cut where applicable will keep your vectors arranged the way you have them in Illustrator, otherwise when you go to cut them on your Cricut machine, Cricut will rearrange your vectors so that you use the least amount of paper. If your file uploads with a black fill, don't worry, simply select white in the material colors to be able to see all the lines of your cuts. Whenever waiting a project, it's always important to take your time to avoid the risk of unwanted tears. You got dreams and I got dreams, so let's start making plans around and maybe we can dive right in. After cutting and weeding out all my black paper cuts, I then cut out my neon rectangles. I initially used a glue stick to adhere the black layer to the colored back layer, which I'll be undoing later once I figure out this doesn't wrap around the candle well. I also used the glue stick to glue the witches and bats to the moon centers. As I was doing this, I had my apprehensions that the witches and bats would stay adhered and not curl away from the paper once wrapped around the candle, which I was totally right about and would later need to figure out an alternative to have these stick thoroughly throughout. To fix my wraps, I gently removed the black layer from the colored paper and used packing tape squares to laminate the witches and bats in place while also covering most of the moon that would be visible. My hope was that this would appear more intentional rather than having the packing tape edges go over the black layer slightly.
So that the color paper didn't stick out from the black layer, I cut off roughly a quarter inch of the paper from the right side. To make it a little easier, I applied tape to one end of the wrap prior to wrapping both paper layers around the candle, then used my scraping tool to get the tape to lay flat without air bubbles. Well, there you have it. I can't wait to show you the final shots, but first, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so so that you don't miss my next video where I'll be making Halloween decor DIYs for 2024. As a teaser, I plan to make mini jack-o'-lantern leaf bags for the houses on my kitchen shelving, an easy garland with some of our favorite 80s and 90s Halloween icons, and there may even be some pumpkin painting. Until then, thank you so much for visiting my creepy craft corner of the internet and for watching till the end. Now let's see those final shots. Yeah.